Hi guys, welcome back to the channel. So today I'm in Arnes Vale Cemetery in Bristol in England and it's a Victorian style cemetery here with some really elaborate monuments and grave sites. So we'll go around and have a look around this beautiful cemetery. So this is Arnos Vale Cemetery in Bristol here in the United Kingdom and it's a Victorian style cemetery and I believe from reading online it's 45 acres in size we have a beautiful gravesite here this person looks like he was well known and some man here in his football gear and you call it in America soccer and it's in loving memory of James Charles Alfred Sanders who was born on the 15th of October 1932 and died on the 20th of May 2007 Bristol showman and professional footballer who played for Bristol City Crystal Palace Rochdale and Exeter City also isn't that just a beautiful statue and the likeness of James Charles Alfred and you see the football there really really stunning statue and just down the bottom of that it says in loving memory of Eileen May Sanders 1934 to 2000 also And just beside James's final resting place, we have in loving memory of Agnes, the dearly loved wife of Charles Heal, showman of Bedminster, Bedmi Bedminster, who fell asleep 1939, aged 60 years old. And it's a statue of a little boy. So it says showman on it. So you have the two statues there side by side. The cemetery is really, really nice and I've never been here before. Another beautiful one here of a lady looking down like she's thinking in loving memory of my dear husband Francis Newt Bacon who died January the 25th 1918 aged 55 and there's another name just on the other side of it there in loving memory of Jack Wallace Bacon beloved husband of Jess and father of Janet Michael and Neil who died in 1968, aged 54 years old. Nice one here of Sacred Heart, Jesus one. In affectionate remembrance of our darling mother, Emily Marion Tyrrell, who fell asleep February the 20th, 1948, age 48 years old. And we have the urn here once again. See a lot of these in these old cemeteries at Victorian style. Loving memory of Richard, the beloved husband of Lily Jenkins, who fell asleep October the 2nd, 1929, aged 67. 
also of Lily, the beloved wife of Richard, who was called to rest January the 19th, 1959, aged 78 years old. And just in that area over there, I think are cremated remains in that section. Some of these statues are very, you know, they're elaborate. A lot of no expense was spared back in the day with these beautiful stone carved statues. Another fine obelisk style here. And that beautiful angel like she's flying through the sky what looks like a harp there in loving memory of David Jeffries of Harefield Hall Wills Bridge who passed away on May the 6th 1900 age 59 also Ellen Jeffries beloved wife of David who died May 17th 1900 17 aged 80 years old so th the sun is out today it was rather cloudy earlier on so it's picked up a bit some lovely old style uh, grave sites here and they almost look like the shape of a coffin some of them look like a coffin there So it's a big cemetery, 45 acres. So we will have a look around and see as much as we can. Now this one is rather nice up here. And it almost looks like it's two flags or there's a flag involved in this scene here. Now it could be something got to do with the military. I think I see a helmet there also. In memory of Lieutenant James Anthony Gardner, late of HM 7th Royal Fusiliers, the beloved and only child of James Anthony and Eliza, his wife, who was accidentally drowned whilst, whilst bathing at Alway, Malabar Coast, East Indies, October the 26th, 1861, aged 30 interred in the protestant protestant burial ground at cochin october the 27th 1861 and removed to beneath this spot by his bereaved parents in 1863 wow so James Anthony here was a, uh, a lieutenant who accidentally drowned while bathing in the sea and he was buried in 1861 in the East Indies and in March 1863 was removed to this burial site here. So that's a beautiful monument rest in peace and sadly lost his life tragically some beautiful old Victorian style monuments here Looks like Jeremiah, maybe, or Alsop is the name on this one. Now 
lovely monument here. Somebody has left, um, looks like a stone here. Beautiful painted stone with all those colours on it, which is nice to see. A modern looking stone on such an old monument. Lydia is the name on this and unfortunately the writing has worn away on that. Lydia, wife of Henry Adam maybe. So the cemetery is really nice. It's, you know, it has that um, old style of, do you know, those old um, overgrown areas and those 17, maybe 1800 headstones that would be hidden away in there, which is really nice. So just ahead there is, I believe it's a chapel in the cemetery here, and it really is a beautiful chapel almost looks like a mausoleum but very large chapel there beautiful the architecture that went into that and there's some old grave sites and monuments around there also so it says here i'm right it was Anglican Chapel, this is. And isn't that just beautiful? I'll just stand back, give you a better look at it there. Those big, massive doors going inside, and I don't think it's opened. But if it's opened, we can have a look inside. Unfortunately, it's locked. Locked today, guys. So we will go different areas and have a look, read some more. As you can see, people parked their cars all along there inside the cemetery, coming in to visit their, their loved ones. And that is beautiful, that one there. And it looks like it's just that little bowl or for flowers there and stuff that's left inside. It's hollow inside. I don't see any names on it. Either side of it there. another beautiful one here in memory of John William Cornish whose remains lie in the crypt St. George's Brandon Hill he died the 18th of March 1838 aged 35 also of Amelia Cornish wife of the above who died at Norwood the 29th of January 1881 aged 74 And that's a beautiful monument. Look at the top of that. Almost looks like a castle look and a style to it there at the top of it. So we go down. As you can see, there's always, um, there's different pathways there to go around. George Sinnott of Langton Court. Wrestlington, who died on the 13th of July 1882, aged 61 years old. Also, Catherine Septima Sinnott, wife of the above, who died in 1933, aged 88 years old. So, you have all these old graves here in a line and so the cemetery is looked after and it's the upkeep of it looks good 
they have all these areas all these areas are um you know the grass is cut and it's well looked after so you hear a helicopter above Arnus Vale in Bristol City Now, there's a really nice one here. You can see a bust of this man here. And this is Thomas Tove Smart, late of Southville, Bedminster, Edinburgh, who departed this life on the 26th of August, 1882 age 68 years old he was for a period of 42 years a medical officer of the Bedminster Union and in this capacity earned a very high reputation for his professional skill and the kindness displayed towards his very numerous patients. He was a truly just and permanently constituous practitioner and the poor lost in him a kind and sympathizing friend, it says. Isn't that a beautiful inscription on that? So this man, Thomas Smart, was a well-known and liked person in the community. A beautiful bust of him there. So Bristol City is beautiful. Um, you know, you can just see all the the cemetery there that's the entrance just straight ahead where you come in and uh, it's really elaborate i love all this victorian style grave sites just another beautiful one here of this small statue here of an angel and it says in affectionate remembrance of sydney maria wife of david Whitley of Melbourne, Australia, who died at Clifton November the 28th, 1881, in her 24th year. Her married life was beautiful, being simple and pure and devoted. Also David, husband of above, who died at San Remo on November the 12th, 1924, aged 82 years old. You know, some of these old 1800 ones have beautiful inscriptions on them and the devotion and words that they, you know, they, they inscribe on these headstones for their loved ones and their husbands and wives. It's just lovely to, to read. Really nice gravesite here. Antonis Chambi Prakai, 1935 to 2014, loved by family, cherished by friends. A beautiful white angel. And there's a photograph there of Antonis just at the top of that beautiful white angel.
all the graves here, you know, are different styles and really nice. And I love the ones with the photos. We have this grave here is very unique looking. I've never seen this style before, not in Ireland anyway. And it's Leonard D. Jagmohan, 1957 to 2018. Keep smiling, your loving deeds, always thoughtful of our needs. Today and tomorrow, our whole life through, we always hold a special place in our hearts for you. And he must have been a cricket fan. You can see the cricket symbols there in the picture. And a photograph of Leonard there. And just beside Leonard's then we held, we have another family member. And it's all the same family, I'd imagine, here. Arnold Jagmohan here, 1936 to 2019. He was a dedicated to his family and beloved and believed that you should take opportunities as they come. And you see the old style photos there. Of all the family members. And it looks like he's driving a bus in that, in that photograph. So this is like a wooded area here. And it's a kind of hard to watch where you're going. And I'm trying to read this one here. And it's very hard to read that language. I'm not sure what that language is. Eleonora Catherine is the name on it. But if you look at the headstone there, it looks like a, a dog, almost like a greyhound maybe or something like that. Stone carved into the headstone there. It's beautiful. It's hidden away in those bushes so we'll go up this trail and see what's here and we have another beautiful one look at that in loving memory of Mabel Selina only daughter of Reginald and Sarah Ann Coates, who fell asleep September the 29th, 1903, aged only 19 years old. And look at that vines wrapping itself and nature taking over around that headstone. And just like the one next door, nature has taken over here also. But you know, when you see stuff like that on headstones, Nature actually at times protects those headstones in a way. Oh, we have squirrels here, guys. As I've seen in Brompton Cemetery. Seen lots of squirrels in Brompton also. I think they're more friendlier in Brompton Cemetery, London. And you can just see all those ones in there. Look at that. All hidden away under all those trees. It's a really magnificent old cemetery here, Victorian. There's that Anglican chapel just there in the distance. Beautiful tomb there. Now there is, I believe, some mausoleums here also. So I'll go and have a look for those. There we have a big anchor. Reese Thomas, beloved minister of Redland Park Congregational Church. And that big anchor on it there. You can just see them all, the old ones in there. Look at that, hidden away. And as we go up further, and these are all vaults here. I'd, I'd imagine they're vaults. This one has fallen on the side here. And you can see all the old brickwork in it there. 
all these vaults. The name Alan is on this one. So the whole cemetery just climbs all the way up those hills there. So it's 45 acres of cemetery. Another beautiful urn. Rosa Jane, wife for over 42 years of William Henry Philpot, who died the 6th of July 1915, aged 64 years old. Isn't that beautiful? I love how they write on these wife for over 42 years and you never really see that in today's headstones you know they never write on it you know somebody who was a wife for so many years another beautiful angel here with the ivy in loving memory of elizabeth the beloved wife of sydney thomas gardner died suddenly in 1924 aged only 47 years old isn't that gorgeous stone carved statue of an angel with those beautiful wings spread out so all this area of the cemetery there's paths going up that direction at the top of the hill there's some more graves here and just here also you can see them all on the hill resting there under all these beautiful branches in that tree. Isn't that gorgeous? And I use the word gorgeous a lot because, you know, it's how I feel about these places and that's what they are. These are just amazing places to visit and the serenity and serene peace that's in these old places you know and here we have memory of Anne wife of G Morris Tower Hill in his city in this city who died the 17th of June 1865 in her 32nd year also Anne Morris who departed this life 1874 aged 46 years old and there's all these beautiful ones here and you can see all the green, the green moss that comes on them. Taylor, aged 57, who died in 1865 on this one. You have all these old ones here on the hill. And it looks like they're broken. Broken away, unfortunately. Celtic crosses. This one looks like it has fallen downwards. And a headstone here has completely fallen over also, which is sad to see that there's no family members around anymore to try and maybe fix it up or even the cemetery. But I'm going to try and get in here to show you. I've spotted a beautiful, a beautiful one here. And I'll just show you where I am. So that's the path just over where the headstone is. And I've come in there to all these hidden ones. And we have an absolutely gorgeous one here. Look at that. Hilda May. Beloved eldest daughter of James and May Hammonds. Born in 1900 and fell asleep in 1910, it looks like, or sorry, 1919, age 19 years old. So, a young girl buried here, only 19 years old, Hilda May. And look at her grave, isn't that beautiful? The angel statue, stone that's carved into her. And that holly at the top. How beautiful is that, guys? And it was hidden away, and it caught my eye. I was as I am. Um, I was walking up the path or the trail there, and saw it. Caught my eye, and you know, 
sometimes I see ones like that and I just think to myself I have to go and read and see who is buried there and remember these people more beautifully angel statues So, I believe all this area here has been tidied up and um, they've done a super job. There's a lot of s graves here that were covered and now they have been uncovered by the people who look after the, the cemetery here. You can just see all that area in there and I'll walk in and just show you where all these graves have been found again and it's nice to see they're tidying this place up you can see all the wood trees that have been cut and all these old graves have come to light again so as, as I'm saying earlier that this place is so big, you know, that you have to just kind of really go with the flow because I don't have a map for the area, but I come across interesting, interesting um, headstones and monuments here and just famous people and there's actually someone getting married and look at that beautiful Volkswagen bus. So, I don't know, somebody getting married in the cemetery, which is something I've never seen before. So, I'll, I'll keep an eye on that and see what that's all about, guys. Maybe they're here for photographs. Some people take photographs in cemeteries. You know, it's a beautiful place. It's no different. Some beautiful Celtic crosses here also. In this wooded area, look at that one there, it's beautiful. Joseph Weston Stevens, JP, born in 1861 and died in 1917. So it's kind of like Highgate Cemetery, you know, you have, you have um, people walking these trails and stuff. But there's a beautiful one in there. Just look at that. Anne Raggett is the name underneath. Beloved wife of David Raggett. Who died in 1864, aged 79 years old. And these are all probably like vaults, you know. In these areas here. Really old. And there's a, a hole in this one here, guys. And I don't have a torch, unfortunately, with me, but it looks like you can see the brickwork there where it's breaking away. And the ground is breaking from underneath that one there. But all this area here is covered in all these old vaults and obelisks. This one here, standing on the hill, Godwin Hugh Davis. Who died in 1842. Wow. This one is absolutely stunning guys. Look at this. Look at this. Monument. This monument is at least I'd say. 20 feet tall at that isn't that something isn't that just something and the name on this is Henry Mels Melsum and it says up the top the Lord is my shield and buckler look at that you can just see that 
a symbol on it there. It's like a belt. I'm sure it's military related. And I'm going to see, is there another name on the other side or some information on this? And it says, sacred to the beloved and endeared memory of Henry Melson, who died at his residence, Barton House, St. James's, in March 1866, age 53. And also in memory of Harriet, widow of the above, who died in, at her residence, also at Barton House in 1876 and it says after a painful and protracted illness born with much Christian fortitude not lost but gone before wow and below that we have Francis Melsom who died at Kingsdown Parade July the 28th 1854 age 60 and was buried in the family vault, Portland Chapel, Kingsdown. Wow. So, another interesting one, just there. And that is a huge monument. That's like something you would actually see in a city, in the center square of a city or something like that. So, can you just imagine what it cost back in the day to erect? A monument like that back in the 1800s Wow another one here nestled on the hillside look at that and you see those faces carved into it there in the stone there's one either side isn't that beautiful and I'm going to see, can I read some names on this? Mary Jane, wife of William, who died in 1924. All these beautiful statues. Look at that, hidden in this wooded area. All that lovely greenery all around. And those faces are either side on it there. The work that goes into these stones are absolutely out of this world, aren't they? So it's just monument after monument here. Thomas Lewis is this one. Isn't that lovely? Thomas Lewis, look at the design on that. It looks like trees, a pillar that has fallen on its side. And all these trees are, if anyone knows the name of those, please let me know. Another beautiful one here, Elizabeth. Mary is the name on it. It's hard to see a name. That huge urn, look at that, and the veil going over each side, stunning. Another one in there, beautiful one. So I'm just making my way back down to kind of where I started. I kind of went around in a, in a ring. So I'm trying to move on to another cemetery here in Bristol but this one is absolutely exquisite it really is and um, you know you don't come across these every day these old Victorian ones really quite nice another beautiful urn in here sacred to the memory of John Bartlett of this city who died in 1852 aged 55 years old wow so just in this area here guys is the it's called the garden of rest and this is where people would 
have their ashes buried in this area and it's really beautiful and in the background there you have the Anglican chapel in the distance so it's a garden of rest so just inside here we have all the niches of all the different people interred in here just see it goes around in a, a circle formation Elizabeth beloved wife of A.H. Pless passed peacefully away 1937 age 55 so I'm not sure how far back these go what's the oldest in them but that'll give you an example of what they look like as you go around. And you can kind of see how it works. You have the timber there in the front part so the people's ashes will be buried behind the wall there. And I like these old green ones here. Lovely memory of her dear father and mother, Reginald Smith, March 1925. Wow. All these people's names on the walls here, and you know, these were all somebody, somebody's son, daughter, husband, wife, All had a part to play at one stage or another. So rest in peace to all the people interred here today. There's a beautiful chapel here also. There was one back there, the Anglican one. But uh, this is another, look at the pillars on this one. Huge chapel and it's locked up unfortunately, but I'd like to have a look inside. But it's locked up. So I just come down to this area here and this looks like an old, old um, burner for cremating people here. You can see just in there, look at that, the coffin would go in there, the person to be cremated, the old style cremation area there. And this would be for coffins, you can see the wheel here, so this wheel would have lowered the coffin from above at the top of the ground there down into this area for the body be to shoot for the body to be cremated wow there's also another old beer here for carrying coffins Beers were essential equipment in the modern crematorium of the 1930s, allowing one member of staff to move coffins easily around the site. Here's another one. We've seen one in Wales, in Abergavenny. So guys, this is the Anglican chapel I was showing you earlier. And there's actually a crypt underneath. So we'll go in and have a look inside.
and his niche is here. And Lucas Greening, wife of Charles Greening of Iron Acton, who died September 1856, age 53. Charles is here, died in 1858. And there's a few on this side here. Margaret Ann Ritchie, widow of Frederick Ritchie, died in 1882. Francis Harrison, 1894, Esquire. And there's a number of other Harrison mem family members there also. So in this area here behind this gate is a lot of urns. You can see different types of styles of urns there. I'll just give you a look over the gate. There's some beautiful statues there of a little girl. Another angel holding some flowers just there. And all those urns stacked up there on top of each other. And I wouldn't think there's any ashes in those urns at the moment. And I don't know the reason why they're all stacked in here. Just a beautiful little area there of it. Storage area here. You can see the old sign. Crematorium chapels, drive in and turn left. Another old beer. Natural burial woodland coffin beer. See the old wheels on it there underneath, all made of wood. And the old window there with the light coming in through all those thorns and overgrowth. Some more urns here stacked up. You see some names on them there, Florence Watkins, Dennis, Les. Albert, 1946, Alfred Gibbs, 1953 it looks like, Thomas Henry, Stevens, 1962, Basil, all different family surnames and they're all stacked up there with that old cross as well so guys that's the crypt under the Anglican ch chapel in this old Victorian cemetery here in Bristol so guys I think I'll end the video here in this old crypt so if you liked the video, give it a thumbs up, hit the notification bell and subscribe to the channel. And I'll see you all on the next cemetery adventure. Take care guys and God bless.